Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and read something pretty exciting for Path of Exile. It's not the Path of Exile uh, patch notes, which I'll be making a video on, but it's the development manifesto, which basically covers balance and Path of Exile synthesis, which is arguably, in my opinion, one of the more important things of the patch notes. So Let's go ahead and start with reading the first couple of things. I basically read this first paragraph and then said, okay, I'm going to just make a video while I do it because it's actually really interesting. So starting off, <clears throat> for a number of leagues, the majority of builds that use spells uh, have used proxies like totems, traps, or mines to cast them. There, there have also been a focus on skills, sorry, not on my glasses, that do their work automatically over a long duration. For this expansion, we focused on putting power back in the hands of casters rewarding players who cast skills directly. In addition to a number of new support gems, we've made changes to almost every damage spell in the game. We've reviewed and adjusted the base damage effectiveness of almost every primary damage spell. We've also included some traps, mines, totems to these adjustments, shockwave totem boys. These changes have focused on separately balancing low and high levels. It's important they say low so you can level with them as well. Many skills have uh, many skills have only required power increases at low or high levels, depending on where they naturally excel. We've also reviewed Vol skills and skills from items, a small number of spells that we consider too powerful for their ease of use, like Brands, Winter Orb, Blade Vortex have had their damage lowered. They should say, like, significantly removed or reduced. They're revealing the fullest of changes in the patch notes. Mana costs of many skills have been adjusted to make the mana cost per cast time of skills much more consistent and this is good i think it's important every you know six months to a year whenever they bring out expansions to take a look at um the overall like spell meta or attack meta whatever it is and then make a big adjustment based off that and then you can pull new numbers out of the new information so mana cost many skills have been adjusted um to make the mana cost per cast time much more consistent okay the, there are a few exceptions to the cast time equivalent mana cost rule. Channeled skills are slightly cheaper, while curses are more expensive than other skills of equivalent cast time. Okay. Many spells that have had cast times higher than 0.75 have been lowered. That's really good. And the damage adjusted the match. I think it feels really nice in Path of Exile to just go quickly. Even if it's not about clear speed meta, it's just casting a spell slowly feels really bad. That's why, like, Freeze Pulse is so nice to level with, because it's really low cast time. Um, the skills were often too unwieldy, unwieldy to cast herself, and their high effective hit damage made them very powerful with traps, mines, and triggering effects. So they have actually indirectly nerfed traps and mines because of that. But sort of buffed totems in a way. Here are a few examples of cast time. Okay, Discharge 0.75 from 1 second, that's huge. Glacier Cascade 0.7 from 0.8, Arc 0.7 from 0.8, Ice Nova, okay. Some skills that had lower areas of effect than other skills without a good reason have either had their area increased or now gained additional radius. Very nice, that's, that's a huge one. Combined with our new options for increasing spell AoE, this should help these skills be more enjoyable to use. You'll find newer sources of increased AoE on the passive tree for casters. Note that we'll be giving you similar bonuses to attack skills in the future. We've made other few changes to various spells like lowering the cooldown on Convocation, having Spark be able to re-hit a target it has pierced after a short delay, having Unearthed Projectiles fly much faster. These are buffs. Arc has also, also has a lower chain distance. Arc got it, like, annihilated. The number of support gems that have fallen behind others in power and utility are receiving some numerical and mechanical adjustments. Chain Fork, Spell Cascade, and Innervate have had values improved. Arcane Surge now has a damage multiplier at higher gem levels. Onslaught support and the Summon Phantasm support now have effects on hitting rare and unique enemies. Very good. Moving away from the on hit. Power, or sorry, on kill. Powerful boss... Oh, so curses. Powerful bosses, especially the Elder and Shaper, previously had significantly less... Effective curses on them to stop temporal chains and enfeeble. We've now lowered this curse effect reduction to let damage curses provide more worthwhile bonuses against bosses. Temp chains and feeble now have separate value of damage reduction and slow for normal and magic enemies compared to rare and unique, and rare and unique enemies have had about half as much effect. The accuracy reduction on feeble has also been reduced. This makes curse builds a bit stronger for single target, which is good. Uh, Death's Oath, boys. We've also had, I'm not playing that though. We've also added multiple sources of energy leech to the game, both on a new support gem and for spells on passive skills. This is really cool. Energy shield has now, wait, energy shield has a lower cap on maximum restored per second than life leech. Okay. But the dedicated energy shield leech passes will let you increase this number. Okay. 
Ghost Reaver now doubles your maximum energy shield per second, in addition to turning all life leech into energy shield leech. This makes it good for pure energy shield casters as well as at leeching attacks. Leech Length Nerf. Previously, there was no upper limit on how much an individual leech effect could restore. This meant that a very high damage hit with enough leech could last minutes, if not longer, like Slayer, basically. If you had an effect letting you leech remain, wait, letting, yeah. Now there is a limit of 10% restored per leech effect, so each individual leech effect can't last more than five seconds. Re. The passive tree. We've made a large number of changes to the passive tree to provide more diverse sources of power. This is probably also, I, I can't believe I'm reading this. It's been years, I'm so excited. Energy shield leech. We've added a number of source sources of energy shield leech for spells. That's awesome. On the passive tree, both on specialized clusters that boost your damage in a few different ways. And as part of the fire cold lightning heart notables, the shadow area of the tree also has a small amount on an, a new evasion and energy shield path. Caster weapon passives. We've adjusted, we've added and adjusted the number of passive tree clusters that affect st staves. I love staves. Dual wielding and shields for casters. These provide powerful bonuses to spells that were previously only found on very generic skills, including a lot of cast speed for casters that are dual wielding, a lot of damage and defenses for those using shields, and bonuses to AOE for staves. We've also made various additional. Uh, additions and improvements to some underutilized passives that affect spellcasters. Elemental Damage Wheel. The Elemental Damage Wheels of passives to the left of the Templar starting area now has fewer Elemental Damage skills and a single powerful Elemental Notable that combines some of the power of the two previous ones. It now includes two new Notables that work very well with new spells that convert physical to fire or lightning. Shadow Starting Passives. We've adjusted connections to the tree in the Shadow Starting Area to be more consistent with other classes and changed the defensive passives and projectile passives to have a simpler, widely useful set of bonuses. A notable passive providing Evasion, Energy Shield, and Energy Shield Leech um, takes some of the old bonuses and places. I have to say, I'm really happy to hear that they're buffing a lot of notables in the tree because I feel like Abyssal Jewels and Jewels in general have kind of diminished how strong the passive tree is and i'm not trying to say like you know i want everyone to be op but i'm pretty i'm pretty curious to see like how good these notables actually are uh channeling passives we've added two new passive tree clusters that provide damage bonuses for channeled skills as well as some defensive properties while channeling like stun avoidance and physical damage reduction very nice the Trickster's Ghost Dance and Escape Artist Notables have been reworked significantly with the goal of providing a unique and very powerful reward for specializing in Evasion and Energy Shield. Ghost Dance now creates a Ghost Shroud every second up to a max of 3 after you are hit. A Ghost Shroud is consumed, restoring Energy Shield based on your Evasion. Wow! Ghost Dance and Escape Artists now have other bonuses based on your Ghost Shrouds. We've also, that's really cool. I always thought Trickster was an interesting class, but now it seems even more interesting. We've also added Frenzy and Power Charge Generation while channeling to the Swift Killer note while channeling uh, to let a channeling Trickster generate charges. Inquisitor. We've reworked the consecrate, consecration based notables and sanctity and pious path to greatly improve reliability of consecrated ground for the Inquisitor instead of just giving powerful bonuses when you're managed to be on a consecrated ground. Sanctify no longer creates consecrated ground when hit or on kill and instead will always create ground on way around you while you're stationary. Holy shit. Pious path now lets the effects of consecrated ground linger for four seconds. Okay, that's crazy. These changes work well with the change to consecrated ground that causes hits against enemies in it to have 100% increased critical strike chance. Previously, an effect would critically cap that 5% minimum critical chance and 95. We've set both of these to 0 and 100. Wow. So you can now have the most consistent crit ever at 100%. Effects that gave enemies an additional chance to be critically hit have all been changed to instead increase the, crit, the, the chance of critical hits against them or give additional critical chance before modifiers as if the attacker had critical bonuses against the target rather than an additional chance added on top. So this was a, a crazy OP stat. Non-chaos is extra chaos damage on weapons. The interaction of non-chaos damage with hits is, as extra chaos damage stat and multiplies damage conversions made this stat far more powerful for very specific setups than a single stat should be. We've lowered the value of this stat on the combined craftable spell damage and non-chaos damage with hits as extra chaos damage modifier and weapons. The veiled mod that only grants this modifier has now been split into four versions. That's awesome. 
Fire, cold, lightning, and physical. Before you could only get it off it that fled in maps, I think, but I could be wrong. These modifiers are now available as a mod on many caster weapons above level 60 and higher, making it a powerful effect to find when creating the perfect elemental specific caster weapon. I like that too, that you're not just stacking chaos now, you can like really get like a huge hit of a specific element. Um, existing items will not be affected by this change. Plus one maximum totems veiled mod. This modifier is no longer available as a veiled craftable mod. Instead, it now appears as a mod on shaper shields. The modifier is too powerful to be easy to be able to easily apply to an already strong rare shield. So now you've got to get it earlier in the process of crafting an item. Unique nerfs. We've made some adjustments to a few unique items that were problematic. Details will be in the patch notes tomorrow. This is also very good for changing the meta. Uh, damage immunity. We've made a few a, cha a few changes to prevent total immunity specific damage types as they could be used to completely trivialize some encounters. Player maximum resistance can never go above 90. Rip a lot of pathfinders. Uh, any maximum resistance you have above this value will have no effect. This is especially important as synthesis introduces other sources of maximum resist. Volume purity auras now provide less damage taken of their element and have less aura effect Per level. The Gluttony of Elements skill now also provides Curse Immunity to prevent the interactions with Temporal Chains, letting it last far too long. Technically, this is a buff. Wow. I have to say, I'm very excited. Damage Immunity change doesn't really affect my builds, but I just don't like when people like kind of cheese content, but you know, that's part of theory crafting. Unique nerf seems really good. Plus one totem being a Shaper mod now is awesome. Um, what else is on there? I like the this nerf basically here. Uh, I like that they're adding, um, splitting it to Fire, Cold, Lightning. Uh, the Critical Strike change is pretty cool. Um, I really like the Inquisitor rework. The Trickster rework. Channeling passives are nice. Um, the Shadow Start looks also really cool because it's uh, basically like, I think, combining the points. The Elemental Damage Wheel... Oh, this is, the, this is also a good one. This is the Templar one. Caster Weapon passives are really nice. Energy Shield Leech is cool. Uh, since they're adding it onto the tree. The leech nerf is also really... N I know it sucks for a lot of people who boss, but I like it because I don't really like leech, so it makes me happy. Um, let's see. The curse the curse buff is really nice on bosses, too. The support gems I talked about before. I mean, overall, I'm very happy with most of these things. Usually, there's like a thing or two that I don't really like, but so far, I've been really happy for this patch. So, I'm excited to see a lot of caster love. I love playing casters. I know some of you guys commented before saying you only see me play RF and Death's Oath and that's because when you play the same caster builds for four years you get kind of bored you need like a meta change and this is kind of like what I was waiting for you know so I'm excited um even though they are nerfing like traps and mines that's okay because I felt like arc mines was way too like strong as a league starter in general it's just it's just way too strong in my opinion um and I really like that they're changing the cast time on a lot of skills and lowering them because that's what directly or indirectly nerfs traps and mines, but makes self-casting feel much better and at the same time should make it so there's more options for traps and mines so you don't feel fucked when you're, you know what I mean? Like if you compare like, I don't know, it, fireball trapper compared to like glacial cascade miner, like it's, I mean, that's a bad example, but you know what I mean? You won't feel as bad now trying to play a character that you want, I guess, when comparing it to others. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Anyway, though, that's pretty much going to be about it. I'm happy to see the channeling buff, since I do want to play a channeling uh, Divine Ire, I think is the skill, on Leak Start. I said I wanted to play Jug, but I may end up going Inquisitor. I'm not really sure. Um, lots of cool stuff so far, so we're just going to have to see where the patch notes takes us and where Leak Start takes us, so... I'm going to catch you guys all later. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you're curious, I'll be playing Synthesis on Hardcore Trade League. And you can catch me probably a day or two before the league goes live to figure out and flesh out exactly what it is that I'm playing. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. And I'll see you boys all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.